السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so uh, last week we had started the chapter regarding the devotion the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had in his worship this narration is by Hudayfa radiyallahu an Hudayfa bin Yaman he narrates that regarding the prayer uh, of the, the night prayer he says that when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yusalli min al-layl he would start fa kana yaqul Allahu akbar thalathan dhul malakut wal jabarut wal kibriya wal adama so he would recite this and then he would uh, start the salah then he would recite surah al-fatiha and then he would recite surah al-baqarah at least sometimes so this in this narration he recited surah al-baqarah fa qara al-baqarah thumma raka'a so he recited Surah Baqarah and then he went for Ruku. For those who don't know, Surah Baqarah is the longest Surah in the Quran, yes. But it is about two and a half juz. Right? So that's, you know, in a regular Quran that would be 30 pages plus 30 pages plus about another 12, 15 pages. So we're looking at about, what, 75 pages in one rakah. Not in the whole Tarawi, not in the whole Ramadan once, not in our whole life once or one year, but in one rakah. Then he would go for ruku. ثُمَّ رَكَعَ فَكَانَ رُكُوهُ نَحْوًا مِنْ قِيَامِ And then when he would go into ruku, his ruku is not like you say, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, and then before you even like fully come to a standstill, you're already coming up. The ruku نَحْوًا مِنْ قِيَامِ So the ruku would be similar length to the qiyam, to the standing. So if he was reading for two and, two and a half juz in the standing position, then he would stay in the ruku for that long as well. Doesn't end there. After he would say Subhana Rabbi al multiple times, ثم رفع رأسه من الركوع, he would come up from ruku. فكان قيامه نحو من قيامي. Sorry, فكان yeah, فكان قيامه نحو من قيامي. Now his standing of um, before you, when you say سمي الله بمحمد, that is called قومه. That time is similar to the standing time when he was reciting. So now, the first was the standing, then was the ruku, now is the standing after the ruku, and then similarly when he goes into sajda, the sajda will be just as long. And not only that, between the sajdas also. ثُمَّ سَجْدَ فَكَانَ سُجُودُهُ نَحْوًا مِنْ قِيَامِهِ فَكَانَ يَقُولُ فِي سُجُودِهِ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّ الْعَالَنِهِ وَسِي سُبْحَانَ رَبِّ الْعَالَنِهِ وَسِي سُبْحَانَ رَبِّ الْعَالَنِهِ now between the sajdas, he would also sit as long as he was in the sajda. This is the prayer, and not as we read in the first narration last week. This wasn't one night. This was every night until the feet were swollen, and then still he would continue to pray. And then he would recite between the sajdas, رَبِّ اغْفِرْلِي رَبِّ اغْفِرْلِي فَصَلَّ أَرْبَعَ رَكَاتٍ And then like this he would recite, four, he would, sometimes he would do four, sometimes he would do eight. Four rakah. And the narrator continues, says, فَقَرَأَ فِيهِنَ الْبَقَرَةِ وَآلِ إِمْرَانِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْمَائِدَةِ أَوَ الْأَنْعَامِ The longest surahs in the Qur'an, those ones. Which comes to about like, you know, you can say five and a half, six juz. So basically, one-fifth of the Qur'an done in four rakah. It even comes, you know, I'm sure we heard this narration, the famous narration with the Sahabi, he was... He joined, the, you know, he joined behind, he thought, you know, it's going to be a quick salah, let me just join. And he was reading and reading, and he's like, oh, he's, no, finally, he, he's come to the end of the surah, or the end of the juz, he's going to go into ruku now, continues. He said, okay, next juz, he's going to, he's going to go into ruku now, continues. He just broke his salah and left. He's like, I can't take it. This was the, this was the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The narrator mentions a few important points. We'll just look at one or two of them. Number one is, in our salah, we are rushed. Our teacher would always, always emphasize on this. Right? And uh, the, our Bukhari teacher, Sahih al-Bukhari, always, in every lecture, I've never heard him not mention it, because it is so important. Many times, when we go into ruku, right, or we go into sajda, what happens? You go into sajda, and before, you, as soon as your head touches the ground, you're already coming up. And then when we're coming up from the sajda, how many times have you seen this? You come up from sajda, and before we even come to a standstill, we're already going back down. This, that means that this salah is missing ta'adil arkan. 
in the Hanafi madhab, Ta'adil arkan is wajib. In the other three madhab, Ta'adil arkan is fard. Meaning, whichever madhab you follow, if you miss this Ta'adil arkan, your salah is broken. In the Hanafi madhab, since it's wajib, if you do sajda sahu, it's okay. The end, the sajda at the end, that like basically repairs the salah. If you do that, then it will fix it. But without that, basically in every madhab, the salah, their salah is broken. And how many times I've seen it myself? You know, I'm sure many of us have seen it. People they come to from the sajda or from the ruku and they start moving right away. Your body has to come to a standstill. So our teacher would mention this in every single lecture. Not once did I see him or hear him, you know, miss that because it is that important. And now we're talking about a sajda over here that might take you know half an hour or one hour. We're talking about seconds over here. We need to add a few seconds to our sajda. Right? And, our, and our ruku and every, everything in the salah. It needs to be with, you know, calm, khushu, you know, devotion. Right? This is the first point. And the second point is that many times, and we can witness this and, you know, we experience this in Ramadan. Sometimes when the, when the, the salah gets a little bit longer or the imam reads a little bit more, you know, or something is a bit slow, we, we start to feel it right away. Right? So we think the, the commentator is asking a question, and we, this is a question for all of us, that why is this? Why are we not understanding, or why do we start feeling this fatigue or this exhaustion when we're in the salah? This is a question for us, right? Why do we feel? Right? We can say, you know, and many people, they use this excuse or this cover-up that we don't understand the Qur'an, so that's what we get. You know, we get you know, bored, or you know, you, you have nothing to do, your mind starts wandering. It says the concept of salah is not the understanding of the salah. It's not learning the translation of the Quran. It's not tafsir class. You know? The concept of salah is who are you standing in front of? Right? Whose words are you hearing? Once you understand this concept, there is nothing to be bored about. There is nothing when a person is reciting, when the person is standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they should be feeling a certain type of ecstasy. You know, an excitement, you know, all of their focus, it, sh it shouldn't go anywhere else because we understand who we're standing in front of. We're, under we're understanding what we're listening to, right? This is why, you know, people when they hear the Qur'an, even though they don't understand Arabic, they get affected. Because it's not the Arabic language, it's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, when the Sahaba... When they, you know, sometimes they would need a, a surgery or they would have, you know, I think it was Ali radiallahu anhu, he had an arrow stuck in his thigh and they told him that, you know, you have to take it out. There was no anesthesia over there, you know, take a shot, you go to sleep, you wake up, everything is good. No, he said, well, I'm going to start my salah and then, you know, take it out at that time. After the salah finished, you didn't take it out. He's like, we already took it out. He didn't feel it. You know? Another sahabi, I think we even read that hadith uh, some time ago where he had to get his leg amputated or part of his leg. He, uh, he, started, he was doing dhikr and done. SubhanAllah, the, over here you know, uh, in the salah, you know, the fly comes by, and like, mm, so we, uh, whole thing is gone. You know? It's because we don't realize who we're standing in front of and you know, what we are doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us devotion and khushu in our salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to pray our salah in the best manner possible because we are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, I'll end with a narration. A narration that is very, very scary for us because if, we are, if our salah is good, inshallah, we'll be set because that's the first thing that will be asked about on the day of Qiyamah. But on the other hand, the narration continues. It comes in Riyadh Salihin. I think we covered it a few, I mean, last year or so. Uh, the narration comes that, The salah will say that if, if we do not pray with khushu, we're not, we don't have devotion, the salah will say, May Allah waste you and destroy you the way you wasted me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that dua and that kind of salah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa tabarakta adhal jalali wa likram. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana dharamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa turhamna lana kunanna min khasirin. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يسيفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله.